Um, good afternoon, everybody. It's hard to see you all here, but that's good. Um, I'm not using any media today. I'm just going to tell you about an example of a social enterprise that uh, we established at CBS and how it occurred in five minutes. So everything that I think about and do is fundamentally based on two things. It's a balance in one hand of the business side of things, so the planning, the strategic management, the checks and balances. The other side of it is always about the culture and values. So um, one of the things I always wanted to do with CBS, who support people with a disability, is to really improve our investment in our infrastructure as well as our people. And so we bought a couple of, uh, of, of um, suites, office suites, in the Aurora on Piri Building at, at 147 Piri Street on Highmar Square. And um, what happened was there was a concierge service there, and as, um, I guess, um, urban construct developed that building, um, they were struggling to sell because it was after the GFC, some of them, and so the concierge service that was there was um, left vacant for a period and I saw an opportunity um, to provide that service um, with a business called Community Concierge SA and Abby's walking around with a brochure about that here and that's what I'm talking about today. Um, we got no help from anybody basically. We, I just saw a business opportunity and I had to convince the people in the building that people with a disability could do that job not just as good but you have to do it better than anybody else. And so I thought, how am I going to prove this to people? And what I found that most people had wrong uh, perceptions of the abilities and the loyalty and the willingness of people who may have a disability of varying ages, some even older than me, and some younger. And what we, I realised, I knew that they could do a better job. I just had to prove it. So taking that concept of culture and values in business, I found out what was it that was most important to that business that I could provide to them. And I've realised that if I could provide a discount to the market to prove that we could do the job really well, then they might take a bite and take a risk and em employ us on a contract. So I did that. So I discounted the, the price that we would have done it by, which was a competitive price, to provide concierge to a building with 192 suites, 1,000 people walking in and out of that building, where people with a disability might be the face of the building, actually helping people without a disability. Fancy that, and fancy that. And ironically, um, we were able to discount that by charging only 15% of the fee for eight months to prove that we could do it. Ironically, people that were sceptical a year later came up to me and said, do you know, Freddie, this is the best service we've had in concierge ever. And that included, to their credit, the people from Urban Construct. Coming on to six years later, we're still there. And in that process, we also um, only employ people with a disability. There are four people working at any time. The service is operating from about 8.30 to 5.30, five days a week. It's employed 20 people, of which the longest two people I checked with today are Marty and Alona. Marty's been there three years, Alona four. And we've helped all sorts of people. A, the classic example is Dennis, who never thought he would work again. He was about 55. He has a vision impairment. And he never thought he could work, but he, he started working eight hours a week, which grew to 15. And then a year and a half later, he got a job at Marion Shopping Centre as a customer service provider and security. Because the, the, the people that we employ are paid award wages and they have a say in the way the roster's worked out so it meets their own personal needs and they have involvement. So Dennis developed the, the actual um, motto, which is nothing is too much trouble. And Dennis is still working there now and so he's been in employment for basically, because he was in the first group for five and a half years now. And Dennis is a classic because not only... So the service is like people dressed a bit like me in dark, in dark suits for the, for the men and the women. Um, and they provide a very discreet security service as well. They also provide postal, so collecting and, and, and receiving mail and posting it, certified mail receipts, collecting papers, 
We have a dry cleaning service, receipt and deliveries, lock-up of deliveries, direction, guidance, information to people about who's adjusted for the peace in the building, first aid, fire warning duties, etc. So that's the sort of services, and and um, the the suite the, the building is quite interesting because it's a group of um, smaller offices. There's uh, Microsoft is there, Halle Burton, a lot of um, health professionals, a lot of um, as we've seen in the growth industries, a lot of um, social services um, in, um, businesses, etc. So it's been a, a fantastic. Um, Opportunity. I'm wearing a black outfit today because unfortunately there's been a bit of a change in some of the, um, I guess, uh, a view about social justice and it's highly unlikely after many successful um, internal and external evaluations that we'll be continuing that contract. We've tried to use that same methodology in other buildings. We've tried Sambury, which we were really close and disappointed that we didn't get that. Um, and even involving two private consultants who are expert marketers to help us, um, I guess, spread this business. It has an income of about 74000 because it also includes contracting after hours services and the rental out of, of um, various office spaces and meeting room. We would love to have been at a point where we had five of them across Adelaide. We've had, more, had a lot of interest from interstate and some from overseas, but we just can't convince um, Adelaide people. When I first met David, bless him, he, he had the time to come and speak with me. Um, that's figuratively speaking, that. Uh, um, to, to, to meet, to try and see if we could get the state government interested in, in, a, in a similar service. So um, I've got a, a, a little bit of colour here, because that colour represents, represents a little bit of hope that maybe even though we're kind of looking on our deathbed after providing such a service that we still may find another place to deliver this fantastic service. So that's really all. That's on your table if you want to have a look at it. And also we've launched a new um, enterprise and that's our Moonlight Speakers. Um, that's a group of leaders with a disability who have had education and training about um, sitting on interview panels, um, being MCs like David's doing today, and doing public speaking and work with students in the community. Thank you.